Hey, you roosters, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be looking at another leader from the Star Wars Unlimited trading card game. In this spotlight, we're going to be looking at one of the more cunning characters throughout the series of Star Wars and the new Disney era of the franchise. But that being said, let's go over the rules of the series. Not every card we're talking about in today's video is going to be perfectly used with the leader that we're talking about. Just personal preferences and card with this face value synergy. Also, that being said, not every card that we do like with this leader will make it into this video. So if you have any better suggestions or alternate suggestions or other suggestions you want to say, please do that in the comment section below. That being said, who is our leader for today's video? That is going to be Grand Admiral Thrawn. He's going to be an Imperial official leader with the cunning and villainous aspects. When this, when the action phase starts, you get to look at the top card of each player's deck. As an action, he also can spend a resource and exhaust himself to reveal the top card of any player's deck and exhaust a unit that costs the same as, same as or less than the revealed card. As a type of action, if you control six or more resources, you can deploy this character as a leader unit. When he is deployed as a leader unit, he becomes a 3-9 unit with the same ability that when at the start of the action phase he can look at the top card of each player's deck but he gets a new ability on attack he may reveal the top card of any player's deck exhaust a unit that costs the same or less than the revealed card so your game plan here is very simple at face value but how you execute it, it takes a lot of planning and thought out um, interactions you obviously want to be exhausting out your opponent's units so they can become they can lose their ability to deal some damage that turn and try to survive in that sense but at the same time, you also want to maybe use the information you get off of that first ability there to make some smart and, and informed plays throughout the game. Let's, look, let's, let's take a look at some of the cards you can play with Grand Admiral Thawne on the cunning, sim, the cunning aspect. So from the cunning aspect, obviously you can play double cunning and choose one of the cunning bases to use. If you do so, Jetta City is a perfectly good option because it allows you to make your opponents even more... Um, less even less aggressive than already they will already be from you exhausting them out now any exhaust any units that you are unable to exhaust will still be able, will still be doing minimum to no damage throughout the game as for some units you can play you can play Bubba Fett which will be a three cost unit three five on attack if this unit is attacking an exhausted unit that didn't interplay this round you get to deal three damage to the defender so obviously if you're exhausting out your your opponent's units with your leader here then you both that will be able to come in and deal some extra damage to them Gerudo is going to be a card that costs one here three uh, power and one HP that he has an ability when defeated you may discard the top card of your deck if it's not a unit you can deal two damage to a ground unit now this ability usually be like a random sort of you have no control of what's going on here in most decks but in throwing you're gonna have a little bit of information on what's gonna be on the top of your deck that being said you can actually use that information to hopefully cheat out some more extra damage throughout the game with greedo you can also here play the fet fire spray or the slave one uh it's gonna be a six cost five six uh unit when played if you control bubba fett or jango fett as a leader or as a unit now, this really will only happen if you have them as a unit already out on the field. You can ready this unit, and then also as an action, you can pay two to exhaust a non-unique unit. Then you can also play the Outer Rim Headhunter, Headhunter to cost one three, raid one. On attack, if you control a leader unit, you may exhaust a non-leader unit. So, fitting into that theme of exhausting out your opponent's units. The Chimera is going to be an 8 calls card, 8 7, shielded. On attack, name a card. An opponent reveals their hand and discards a card with that name from it. And then also, you can play No no Good to Me Dead, 2 calls, exhaust a unit that unit can't ready this round. You can then also play as another um, event, Cunning. If you're playing him on double Cunning, then you can play this four calls, choose two in any order. Return a non-leader unit with four or less power to its hand to its owner's hand. Give a unit minus four um, power this phase. Exhaust up to two units, or an opponent discards a random card from their hand. Obviously, those last two effects are pretty cool here. A little bit of disruption, and of course, exhausting out your opponent's units. But the rest of them also could have pretty decent effects as well for you throughout the game. And then you can also play the Asteroid Sanctuary, exhaust an enemy unit, and give a shell token to a friendly unit that costs three or less. So what if you don't want to play him, uh, what if you're looking for some other aspects, cards to look at too, right? Cunning's not the only aspect in the world, you can also play him on Vigilance, right? So um, in terms of your base options here, Security Complex is obviously a good option, but going for the Capital City is fine too. It depends on whether you want that extra shield or the extra health. 
You can play Regional Governor to cost 1-4. When played, name a card. While this unit is in play, opponents can't play the named card. Now, this is going to be an ability that most decks wouldn't be able to have a good idea of what's going on. But with Thrawn, you have a little bit of information about what might be on top of your opponent's deck. And then, of course, what they might have in your hand through that information. Because if you see what's on top of their deck in the next turn, they're obviously going to draw two cards. And now you have a little bit more of an idea. Obviously, it's not perfect. They could have resourced that card. They could play that card before you get a chance to play this card. But in all of all, you might have a little bit more information than your opponent, um, um, than your opponent, than other decks might. And then also, generally, you can just name a card that you're afraid of at the current point in time. If you're afraid of a certain unit or a certain event that may come in and wreck your strategy, or you're really afraid of them applying that card's damage or whatever it might be, you can use this card to make sure that they aren't able to do that. You can play the ATAT -AT Suppressor, 8 cost, 8 8, when played, exhaust all ground units. And then, of course, you can play the Inferno 4 to cost 2 3. When played and when defeated, look at the top two cards of your deck, put any number of them at the bottom of your deck and the rest on the top in any order. Generally, you're already going to know what's on the top of your deck, but this card can give you a little more bit of information. And if you know there's a card on top of your deck that you really don't care about drawing in this matchup or at this point in time, you can use the Inferno 1 to get rid of it, knowing that it's there and knowing that this is a way to get rid of it. You play Search Your Full Feelings for a call. Search your deck for a card and draw it. Then you have to shuffle your deck. Um, obviously, it's a really powerful search card, but a lot of times when you're looking, when you have the information about what your opponent might have, you may want a little, you may know what you may need, but not have it at the time, and being able to just search out any card is absolutely super powerful. And then that's it going to be it for the Vigilance aspect, but of course, after Vigilance, we can talk about some of the other active decks, such as Command. Command is a very thematic way to play Thrawn, because he's a strategic type of guy. You can play him with the uh, Command Center or the Energy Conversion Lab. It doesn't really matter too much to me, um, the way I see it, which one you play with him. Play with him. It, none, neither of the two of them are super thematic. But I'm rather super synergistic, but of course, if you really need that extra ability and you find that throughout the game, that ambush is going to help you out, then of course, go for it. Super Legend Technician is a really powerful card um, in most decks, but in this deck as well. Three costs to, to one. When defeated, you may put this unit into, a, into play as a resource and ready it. Um, as you'll see, we have a lot of high cost units throughout this throughout this um, uh, video, and so getting more resources to be able to actually use those units is going to be pretty important. You can play the Reinforcement Walker. It costs six nine. When played or when um, when played and on attack, look at the top card of your deck. Either draw that card or discard it and heal three damage from your base. And then you can also play the. Uh, the frontline shuttle two cost one three action defeat this unit attack with the unit even if it's exhausted and it can't attack bases for this attack. You can play the patrol V wing two cost one one when played draw a card. Um, generally you know it's on top of your deck so you'll know whether what whether or not you want it or not and generally if you do this card is going to allow you to quickly get that card in this phase actually so you can actually use it. Resupply similar to the technician three cost to put this event into play as a resource. Um, and then you can also play the Academy Training, 2 cost, plus 2, plus 2 to the attached um, a unit. And then um, the heavy, the heavy, the hard point heavy, goodness gracious, the hard point heavy blaster, there we go. 2 cost, plus 2, plus 2, only attach it to a vehicle unit, and the attached unit gets on attack. If this unit isn't attacking a base, you may deal 2 damage to a unit in the defender's arena. We talked a lot of, we'll talk about a lot of vehicles throughout this video but also just in general there's a lot of different vehicles that work well with Thrawn because a lot of times the vehicles are the highest cost cards and having playing higher cost cards in Thrawn is actually can actually be a benefit to you because the higher the cost of cards in your deck is the higher the cost of things you can exhaust on your opponent's side of the field and that's gonna be it for the command aspect um, and then of course finally we have aggression so aggression has a lot of cool cards in general Let's take a look at what, Thr what they can bring to Thrawn's um, uh, game plan here. Target Town is obviously a really good option to control your opponent's board by knocking some of them off with the 3 damage to any non-leader unit. But of course, playing the Kestro City is perfectly fine, and um, uh, I think it's a perfectly good option as well. The 5th Brothers is a nice a cool card here. 3 cost, 2, 4. This unit is going to gain raid 1 for each damage on him. And then on attack, you may deal 1 damage to this unit, deal 1 damage to another ground unit. Allow you to control your opponent's board a little bit. You can put an aggressive threat that your opponent's going to want to deal with quickly onto the field. And then if you damage an opponent's unit, you can then come in with a 1st Legion Stormtrooper. 2 cost, 2, 3. While attacking a damage unit, this unit gets plus 2 and gains overwhelm. 
And then you can also play the um, Starwing Scout, three cost for one. When defeated, if you if you have the initiative, you get to draw two cards. It's gonna allow you to pick up some of the cards you may ha you may want from on top of your deck. It's gonna allow you to get access to those cards or dig for other cards you may be looking for during the matchup. And then you have the Sableling Fang Fighter, three cost, three two. When played, defeat and upgrade. A lot of times your opponent's going to have big upgrades on the field that are sort of going to disrupt you throughout the game, and they're just going to be really big threats. Uh, but you can use this card to shut that down and sort of disrupt that game plan if that's what they're going for. Or if it's just an upgrade that you really don't like on the field, maybe they traitorous one of your characters, one of your units. Then finally, this is not going to really happen all too often, but we have Force Surrender. Um, it's going to be a three cost event, so it's going to be pretty darn expensive, but you get to draw two cards and each opponent whose base you damage this phase discards two cards from their hands. And sometimes it may come into, it might come in handy, but I feel like, um, if any deck can really make the best use out of this card, uh, then Thrawn's going to be one of them. And then finally, we're going to talk about some Benalini cards here. You can play Grand, um, Admiral, or just Admiral Mahdi, two cost, one, one. What if you can ready a, uh, villainous unit? And then you can also play the Viper Probe Droid, 2 cost, 3-2, when played, look at your opponent's hand. Really not a powerful effect whatsoever, but at the same time, it's going to give you a little bit more information. And that's sort of the Thrawn's game plan, so I felt I might as well include it in today's video. Interestingly enough, I'm going to talk about some heroism cards really quickly, because there's a lot of heroism cards that work pretty well with Thrawn, and they're just hard not to mention them because of the value they can provide to the game. First off, we have R2-D2, 1 cost for um, HP, 1 cost, 1 power for HP. When when you play him and when you attack him, you can look at the top card of your deck, and you may put it at the bottom of your deck. Generally, you're going to know what's on the top of your deck, so this card isn't exactly too powerful, but sometimes throughout the phase, if you've drawn some cards, if you use some other abilities, the top of your deck, the top part of your deck may change, and R2-D2 can help you refix it. Then three, three, C-3PO is going to be a 2 cost um, um, unit, and this one's super powerful with Thrawn. One cost for um, one power for um, HP. When on, when you play him and when you attack with him, you can choose a number and look at the top card of your deck. And if it's the if if its cost is the chosen number, you may reveal it and draw it. And a lot of other decks, you may not be able to consistently know what's on top of your deck. But in Thrawn, when you're playing Thrawn, the ability to know what's on top of your deck is a guarantee. So a lot of times, it's going to be when on play, you get to draw a card. On attack, you get to draw a card, and your opponent's going to have to deal with this threat. Or they're going to have to let you get a, a steady flow of card coming in. Chopper is another interesting one. One cost, one three. Obviously, all these cards are going to be plus two to their cost because of uh, the fact that you don't have the heroism aspect. But they're just cards that you could think of playing maybe if you were playing Thrawn because they do have some pretty cool synerg synergy with him. One power, three HP. While you control an unexpected unit, this is going to gain raid one. Probably not going to happen. But on attack, you can discard a card from the defending player's deck. And if it's a bit, exhaust the resource that player controls. A lot, again, in a lot of cases, it's going to be random flip off the top card of your opponent's deck. But in Thrawn, you may not, you may actually know what that is, and you may know whether or not this is going to work or not. And so it's going to get, you're going to have a little bit more information on the matter, and it's going to allow you to make more informed decisions when to use this ability. Or when to rather when to attack with Chopper. As a bridge is going to be a 3 cost, but he's going to go up to a 5 cost card, but it may actually be worth it. He's going to be a 3-4. When this unit completes an attack, you may look at the top card of your deck. You may play it, discard it, or leave it at the top of your deck. Obviously, it's a lot of information going on there. You can fix the top card of your deck, but if you really want to, you can play it. Obviously, you still have to pay the cost, but um, in Thrawn, you're going to know what that card is most of the time. So a lot of the times, you're going to know whether or not you want to play the card. Bamboozle is an interesting card because I'm not really sure how this is going to work, but um, it's going to be a 2 cost you may discard a uh, cutting card from your hand instead of paying this event's cost. I really not sure if I'm really not sure if that means that even if you don't have the heroism symbol, as long as you discard the cunning card, you can just play for free essentially. But I mean, maybe you still have to pay the extra two. I'm pretty sure it's still free. But if that is the case, you can exhaust the unit and return each upgrade on it to its owner's hand. A pretty cool card in general. And then finally, this card is really not that amazing because it's gonna be a five cost event. But it's your my only hope. And you get to look at the top card of your deck and you may play it. If it and it costs 5 less. So a lot of times this is not really going to. It's going to be a 5. Um, You're going to be paying the 5 resources in Thrawn at least. You're going to be paying the 5 resources, resources. To essentially get to play, get the chance to play a card from the top of your deck. But at the same time if your base is at 5 or less remaining HP. You actually can play this, play the card for free instead. And so in Thrawn it can end up becoming. Well I know it's on top of my deck. I can play this 
pay five and play the top whatever eight cost thing from the top of my deck and it can it become pretty cool and pretty nutty but that's going to be it for today's video a really weird leader you know, overall especially with the card pool we currently have sometimes it may not be clear exactly what you want to be doing with him but at the same time his game plan is pretty it's, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward what he does is pretty straightforward but how you're going to implement it really takes some planning some thinking sort of like the character in the lore himself but that's gonna be all for today's video if you guys enjoyed it please watch some of our other star wars unlimited leader spotlights and if you're interested in seeing the more of this content please subscribe to the channel we only have a couple characters left to go in a couple days until star wars unlimited officially releases and i hope to see you guys there well, that's going to be all for now, but if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys go ahead and watch some of our other videos that we've made on this channel. Also, give this video a like if you thoroughly enjoyed it. And of course, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our future content. And I hope to see you guys back at the roost.